In the news, police discover severed head of state lawmaker. Court sentences 21-year-old Russian soldier to life in prison for killing unarmed civilian. Federal government cancels planned resumption of train services. Details shortly. This is TOS Television, your digital first Pan-African news network. I am Merciful Ajinamo, and this is TOS News 360. Police in Nigeria have discovered the severed head of a state legislator, Okechuku Okoye, who went missing last week in the southeastern state of Anambra, where the government accuses separatists of carrying out a spate of killings and kidnappings. The lawmaker and his aide, Cyril Chekboka, were kidnapped on Sunday along Agulu Zigbo Road and North Chaloko government area of the state. He represented Aguata 2 constituency in Anambra. According to eyewitnesses, Okoye's head was dumped at Chisco Park in Amichi in Newi South local government area on Saturday, six days after he was abducted. The ruling All Progressives Congress has fixed a new date for the screening of these presidential aspirants for the 2023 general elections. This was announced by the National Organizing Secretary of the party, Suleiman Arugungu, on Monday in Abuja. He said the party will be screening the 28th presidential aspirant who obtained farms on Tuesday, May 24th and Wednesday, May 25th at the Transcorp Hilti Hotel Abuja. At least 11 people were confirmed dead by residents when bandits attacked the Rwan Bore community of Talata Mirafa local government area of Zamfara State on Saturday. Local sources said several residents were also wounded by the bandits. It was guarded the village had been deserted by the remaining residents while funeral prayers were conducted for the deceased in a nearby village. The Nigerian government has cancelled the resumption of train services between the capital Abuja and the northern city of Kaduna earlier scheduled for Monday. The services were suspended in March after gunmen blew up the railway with an explosive device forcing a train carrying hundreds of passengers to stop. They then opened fire killing at least nine people and kidnapping more than 60 others who are still in captivity. Authorities in Ethiopia's northern Amhara region say they have arrested more than 4,500 individuals, including a former army commander in an operation targeted at enforcing law and order in the country. The region's security office head, Desale Gintesio, told media outlets on Monday that those arrested were suspected of spreading lawlessness. This is your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television. You are watching TOS News 360. More Africa, global and business stories after this timeout. Stay with us. Thanks for staying. Somalia's newly elected president, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, has assumed the office of Somalia's presidency a week after he was elected by the Horn of Africa countries, both houses of parliament. In a ceremony at the country's presidential palace in the capital, Mogadishu, former president Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed Famajo handed over the power to Sheikh Mohammed. At least four people have been killed and about 80 others trapped on the rubble after an unfinished building collapsed in southwestern Iran. An initial toll confirmed that at least four people have lost their lives and 21 others have been injured. Mujapad Khaledi, spokesman for the National Rescue Service, was quoted as saying, A Kiev court Monday ruled that a 21-year-old Russian soldier who killed a civilian was guilty of war crimes and handed him a life sentence in the first verdict against Moscow's forces since their invasion. The court has found that Sheshimarin is guilty and sentences him to life imprisonment, George Sergei Aganov said. Shemish Marin, a Russian sergeant, admitted earlier in court to killing 62-year-old Alexander Shelipov in the first days of the Kremlin's offensive in northeast Ukraine. President Joe Biden of the United States at a press conference in Japan disclosed that the U.S. will defend Taiwan militarily if it comes under attack. Biden added that China had no right to seize the island by force. He stated that a forcible takeover of Taiwan would dislocate the entire region 
and was comparable to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Talking business, the National Bureau of Statistics has revealed that Nigeria's gross domestic product grew by 3.11% in the first quarter of 2022. This was disclosed via its official Twitter page on Monday and in a statement on its website. The tweet read, Gross domestic product grew by 3.11% in real terms in the first quarter of 2022, showing a sustained positive growth for six consecutive quarters since the recession witnessed in 2020. And that is TOS News 360 on your digital first Pan African news network. For more updates, visit www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Merciful Ajinomo. Thanks for watching.